Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. In today's video, I'm going to demonstrate how to use Topaz Labs Photo AI as a Photoshop plugin. Plus, I have an announcement. I'm going to be coming out with an entire course on Topaz Labs Photo AI. As a matter of fact, I just outlined the course. It's going to consist of 12 to 14 how-to videos. Each of those videos will have a PDF outline that you could download and print at home. And you'll be able to download all of the files I use in the course so that you could work along at home. The course is going to sell for $29.99, but if you subscribe to my newsletter, you'll get early access to the course and you'll get $10 off. So you could get the course for $19.99. If you don't already subscribe to my newsletter, I'll have a link to it in the description below this video. Now, how do you use Photo AI as a Photoshop plugin? It's, it's easy, but there is a wrong way to do it and a right way to do it. Let me demonstrate. I'm going to open up an image into Photoshop. It's a Nikon RAW file. Whenever you open a RAW file up into Photoshop, it will automatically open into Camera Raw. Now you could do some editing here. You can see this RAW file, it's overexposed. If you ever watched any of my videos, I have demonstrated in the past how to handle images that are either over or underexposed. What I do is I'll go to highlights and take them all the way down, shadows all the way up. Now in the case of this image, because it's overexposed, I would then go to the exposure slider and take it down. If it was the other way around, if it was underexposed, I'd move it to the right. I'm just going to take exposure down till it looks like it's properly exposed. It looks like it's properly exposed right about there. Then I'll get a white and black point. Uh, the way I like to do it is hold the option key on my Mac, alt key on a PC, click on the white slider, I'll get an entirely black screen. Move this to the right so I see, till I see some color coming through. I'll just back it off till all that color dissipates. And that is a pretty good white point right there. Do the same thing for black, so I'll hold that option key on my Mac in. Move this to the left till I see some color come through. I don't mind crushing the shadows a little bit. And I'll just kind of eyeball it till it looks decent. That's pretty good. Now the image does have a lot of noise. Now I could do some more editing here, but at this point I think I want to get rid of that noise. So I'm going to open this up into Photoshop by going down here in the lower right hand corner and clicking on open. Now if you open a file other than a raw file up into Photoshop, it won't automatically open into Camera Raw. So if you open a TIFF, a, a PSD, or a JPEG, it's not going to automatically open up into Camera Raw. If you need to do editing in Camera Raw on that type of file, once you open it up into Photoshop, go up to filter and then down to Camera Raw filter so you could do editing just like I did. All right. Now, I mentioned there's the right way to do this and the wrong way to do this. I'm going to show you the wrong way first so I can make a point. Once you have the Im image up, opened up into Photoshop, you could immediately send it into Photo AI by going up to Filter and then down to Topaz Labs and then over to Topaz Photo AI. And it will take the image and open it up into Photo AI. Now, if you're not familiar with Photo AI, Photo AI has something called Autopilot. As soon as you open an image up into it, it's going to examine the image and determine what it needs. In this case, you can see on the right-hand side, it says it needs to noise and it needs to be sharpened. At the bottom, you'll see there's a progress bar. You can see it's going through examining exactly how much noise reduction it needs and how much sharpening it needs. Not only that, it's determining what model to use. There's different denoise models and there's different sharpen models. Now, You'll notice this was a raw file, but it's using denoise. Those of you that are familiar with uh, Topaz Labs Photo AI know that if you have a raw file, that there's raw denoise available. Unfortunately, if you're using Photo AI as a Photoshop plugin, raw denoise is not available. So you have to use just denoise. Now, even with denoise, if I open it up, you'll see that there are three different models normal, strong, and extreme. For this specific image, Autopilot decided it needed strong and it needed strength at 29, minor to blur at 1, which it didn't move at all, it starts at 1, and original detail at 0. Uh, for this point in the demonstration, I'm going to keep those default settings, I'm not going to do anything. And then for Sharpen, you could see that it determined it needed the standard AI model strength at 45 and minor denoise at 100. I'm not going to do anything yet. I want to make a point why this, I consider this to be the wrong way to do this. We're going to export it back to Photoshop. And it's going to now save the file and go back to Photoshop and we'll have our noise reduced sharpened image. And you noticed in, in Photo AI, it did a good job, right? So we'll click on the image here and then I'm going to zoom in by hitting Command Plus on my mic, on my Mac. 
and it's uh, Control Plus on a PC. By the way, on my website, anthonymorganti.com, I have a full list of all the keyboard shortcuts for Photoshop. It's free. It's a PDF that you could download and print at home. I have a link to it in the description below this video. Now I zoom in, you can see, oh, it looks great. It's really sharp and it removed all that noise. But if you look over at the layers panel, I just have the background layer. Um, I can't give you a before after because I just overwrote the background layer. That's part of the reason why this is the wrong way to do this. The other thing is let's say you get back in Photoshop and you go, you know what? I just, I over sharpened it. I need to go back into photo AI and bring down the sharpening. Well, it doesn't remember what you did when you do it this way. So if you want to be able to go back in and re-edit things and you don't want it fully destructive like I did, you need to do this slightly different. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my history panel and go back to my open image. And this is now the noisy image. I'm going to zoom in. You can see there's a lot of noise and it's not super sharp. Now, when you're done in Camera Raw and you open the image up into Photoshop, the first thing you should do is duplicate the background layer on a Mac, hit Command-J. On a PC, hit Control-J. You'll have a duplicate layer. We're going to do all our work on this layer. Now, also, if you want to be able to go back into Photo AI and re-edit anything, we need to make this layer a smart layer. Some people call it a smart object. To do that, go up to Filter and then down to Convert for Smart Filters. Once you do that, it will take a second, but you'll see there's a little square in the corner of the layer, and that means this is a smart layer, a smart object. Now we'll send the image into Photo AI, same way we did before. We'll go up to Filter, down to Topaz Labs, and over to Photo AI. Now it's going to do the same thing. It's going to go through Autopilot. It's going to determine it needs denoise, and it's going to need sharpening. But I am going to do some tweaks to uh, at least sharpen. I think denoise worked pretty good, but I think sharpening, we could maybe improve that a little bit. So we need to wait for it to render. You can see there's that progress bar at the very bottom. Once it renders, um, those of you not familiar with Photo AI also, you, the rendering takes a long time. And if you have a slower computer, it could take a really long time. And unfortunately, if I just move this a little bit, you can see in the navigation window in this right-hand side here that we have, we're kind of zoomed in a little. If I move it or drag it around, it's got to re-render again. Or if I zoom in or zoom out, it's got to re-render again. And that could be time consuming. So you got to be aware of that. Now I mentioned that I think the noise is okay. I'm going to open up Sharpen though. And you'll notice for Sharpen, there are four different models. There's standard strong lens blur and motion blur. And it determined that it needs standard with the strength of 45 and minor to noise of 100. Um, just from experience, because I've edited this image in the past, I think lens blur works the best. So to save time, I'm going to immediately go to lens blur and we'll let it sharpen. It's again, now it's got a render again and let it do its thing. And that actually looks pretty good. Now I could come in here and try to like tweak it. And just for the demonstration, I'm just going to tweak it a little. It's on nine. I'm just going to bring it up to 10. Now it has to, of course, re-render again, but I'm making a point. This is why I'm doing this. So autopilot thought it needed standard, the standard AI model. I changed it to lens blur and I changed the strength to 10. So I'm going to say that's good enough. Now I'm going to export it back to Photoshop. Now once it does, because I made that layer a smart layer, a smart object, I'll be able to go back in and re-edit when I get into, um, you know, if I determine, let's say, that I over-sharpened it or something like that. Now here's our image here. I'm going to zoom in. Of course, it does this sometimes. I got to click on it a couple times. There we go. And you can see, actually, it looks great. It's nice and sharp. It got rid of all the noise. Here's a before. And there's an after. Now, of course, the background layer wasn't edited at all. This is why we do it this way. There's before and there's after. But let's just say that I don't like something I did. I Maybe the, I didn't remove the noise fully, or maybe it's too sharp or it's not sharp enough, and I want to go back into Photo AI. To do that, just double click on where it says Topaz Photo AI. When you double click there, it will bring the image back into Photo AI. Now it's going to go through the autopilot thing again, but it's really not going to change anything that I did previously. Remember when I uh, opened up Sharpen, I changed the model from standard to lens blur. And I moved it, I tweaked uh, the amount or the one slider from nine to 10. So we'll let it do its thing. Let its progress bar. I think I've wasted a lot of my life sitting in my computer waiting for uh, things to render. 
All right, we're at lens blur and strength is at 10. So it remembered what I did. That's the whole point of making that layer a smart object. So we're going to go back to Photoshop um, because I just want to show you actually one more thing, one more issue you may encounter. Uh, so we have to wait for it to do its thing and open back up into Photoshop. It has to do with cropping. Uh, you may be surprised that if you crop the image now, after you're done cropping, it's going to go back into Photo AI automatically uh, because it has to re-examine the image because you cropped away a lot of pixels. So let's go. Let's do it. Let's go to the crop tool. All right. I'm going to use actually this ratio right here. And then I'm just going to pull it tighter though. Yeah, it looks pretty good. All right. So we're going to click the check mark. Now watch what happens when I click the check mark. It's bringing up the plugin again. Now it's not going to be here long. It's just going to do it all automatically. It's going to save it automatically and it's going to bring us back to Photoshop. If this is okay for you, then that's fine. Um, personally, I like to do my cropping in Photo AI. There is cropping available. Now once it's done, I'll show you. Um, and actually this save takes a long time. I noticed when you do crop in Photoshop, and it has to briefly go back into Photo AI and then come back into Photoshop. That save takes a really long time. Just be aware of that. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you something in Photo AI. So I'm going to double click on Topaz Photo AI here. And it's got to do the autopilot again. But notice there's a crop tool right here. And again, I'll cover this in the course. And actually in some of my YouTube videos, I have talked about cropping in Photo AI. Um, I recommend if you're doing any cropping to an image to do it here. The reason why is because while you're here, if you need to increase the resolution, if you need to make the image larger, you could go to add enhancements and you could go to upscale. So not only could you crop it, then after you crop it, you could upscale it. So you're not jumping back and forth between Photoshop and uh, Photo AI that much. You could take care of it all at once. And then once you're back here, now, couple things, those of you not really familiar with Photoshop, um, I can't save this as a raw file. It's just not possible. So what I need to do is I need to either um, save it so that I could work on it again. I would go up to File, down to Save As. When I get the Save As dialog, you could see I could save it as a Photoshop file, a large document format file, a Photoshop PDF, or PDF which is, you know, I don't think you'd want that. That's kind of a document file. Or a TIFF file. I like to save it as Photoshop, have the .psd at the end, and I'll just save it to the desktop. Now that .psd file, uh, if I close down Photoshop and then a month later I, I just double click on that .psd file, it will open up in Photoshop and it will have all the layers here. It will remember everything we did. We could go back in and re-edit in Photo AI and all that. So we'll be able to do that. Um, if you want to share this image with the world, though, you're probably going to want to save it as a JPEG or export it as a JPEG. To do that, go up to File, then get down Export, and then down to Export As. Then you'll get this dialog box, and here you could save it as, I think, three different file types, if I remember right. PNG, JPEG, or GIF. I'm going to save it, of course, as a JPEG. You could change the quality. Uh, if you have low quality, it will be a smaller file, but it may have some artifacts in it. If you go high quality, it's going to be a larger file, but it will have less artifacts in it because all JPEGs have some compression done to them. And you'll get compression artifacts if you have the quality too low. You could change the actual image size here. Uh, let's just say I, I, I'm going to send it an email, so I want the width 1,000. You can see it automatically set the height to 1250. Um, you could change the canvas. I'm not going to do that. You rarely would do that. You could uh, change the color space test RGB so you know that it will render faithfully on any device, the color wise, and then you could just click export. When you do that, you'll be asked where. I'm just going to save it to the desktop. You can rename it as well. And that's it. That is how you use Topaz Labs Photo AI as a Photoshop plugin. Of course, in the course, I'm going to go into a lot more detail, talk a lot more about the different models available explain more thoroughly why the raw denoise model isn't available when you use it as a Photoshop plugin. Of course, we'll be using it in the course as a Lightroom plugin, standalone application. We're going to talk about upscaling and all that other stuff. 
relighting, uh, color enhancements, all the stuff you could do in cropping, of course. We'll cover all of that in the course. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.